Cleric is easily one of the best classes in 5e and it's still solid in 1 DD. Hit points and proficiencies are the same as usual, and now they have Channel Divinity as their first level feature. Channel Divinity now has uses equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest instead of once per short rest, which means you'll be able to get more mileage from it than before and it has two modes to start with. The first one is Divine Spark, and I noticed it's a written as a magic action. It's a new term to describe using your action to cast a spell, use a magic item, or a feature to use a magic action. It also notes here that if you break concentration during the casting time of a spell, you don't waste the slot which is nice. <laughs> Divine Spark can be used to heal an ally or deal radiant damage to an enemy through a constitution save and half of that damage if they succeed. The value scales off your proficiency bonus, and I think this is a solid feature if you're needing for that extra little damage. Turn Undead forces all undead within 30 feet of you to make a wisdom save or be dazed and forced to dash away from you until they're damaged or until they die. Dazed is a new condition where they can either only take an action or move but not both. I think this is great so it's not as crippling as a stun where you can't move and act. You have to choose one. They also lose their bonus actions and reactions as well. This is a buff since back then some undead could just kite you with ranged attacks until you look like a porcupine but now they're forced to dash instead. For spell casting, it's the same as ever since there are wisdom based casters that can swap out their divine spells during long rest. At second level, they get holy order and they get to choose between three modes as well. Protector gives you martial weapon and heavy armor proficiencies. I think this is the best choice early game for the heavy armor proficiency and that sweet extra AC. Scholar gives you proficiency in two of these skills and oh, you also add your wisdom modifier, this is expertise. They gave clerics early game expertise. That's what this is. It's a little worse at level 17, but it's significantly better than expertise at earlier levels. I can just hear the rogues crying in their corner. Just based off this, level 2 clerics already have more interesting character options than rogues will ever get in their entire career. Spellcasters, maybe. Thaumaturge gives you an additional cantrip and you can regain a use of channel divinity on every short rest. I think this one is a little weaker than the rest, but if your subclass has a really good channel divinity, then I think it's good enough to lean into that. I think Scholar is the best since you pretty much get expertise on a cleric which doesn't normally happen back then and it gives the player lots of options on how they want their cleric to be. Very flavorful and very powerful. You get your subclass at level 3 instead of level 1 and they release the life cleric subclass for this playtest with its third level feature, Disciple of Life. Oh, and it's still the same as last time? Really? Well, I guess it's a staple since it's just extra healing and the domain spells it has are just lots of healing spells, as vanilla as you can get. At level 5, you deal radiant damage to undead creatures who fail their saving throws on your turn on dead saves. Nice, it's a good sprinkle of damage. Hold on, doesn't this mean those undead creatures aren't dazed and turned anymore because they took damage? You must have meant that the damage will happen first, then they will be turned, right? Watsi wouldn't design a feature to make another feature completely unusable, right? Destroy Undead is now removed, which I'm happy with since the ability to insta-kill low CR zombies was super boring and not at all interactive. Plus, it's useless against higher CR enemies. Though I understand the fantasy of killing an entire wave of horrors with one glance, I like the Smite Undead feature more so that it just doesn't insta-kill like it's nothing. You can also use this feature on stronger undead enemies. I just hope they fix the wording so it doesn't make turn undead pointless. Preserve life lets the cleric use channel divinity to use the paladin's lay on hands feature without the disease healing. With the restriction that it can't heal creatures no more than half their HP. This is a great ability because healing in the middle of combat is only ever needed when people are low on HP so that you save on action economy. Blessed Strikes gives you a d8 of extra radiant damage on your cantrips and weapon attack once per round. This is good extra damage for the cleric. You can pick another holy order at level 9 and blessed healer gives you a little bit of self-healing when you heal other creatures. What do you mean this is the same feature as last year? Divine intervention allows you to call upon your deity and there's around an 11% chance they'll respond with their godly might. The DM can choose the nature of the response but any divine spell is appropriate. If it fails you can just use it after a long rest and if they respond you can't use it for 2d6 days. Keep in mind that you can use this to cast a 9th level spell at level 11. The cleric can call upon their deity to use true resurrect on something or gate to be able to go any place in the entire multiverse six full levels earlier than they would be normally allowed to cast it. Supreme healing at level 14 maxes out your dice rolls when it comes to healing spells. It's the same thing as last time by the way. At 18th level your divine intervention now just automatically succeeds and you don't even need to roll the dice anymore. The cooldown is shortened to 2d4 days and at this point you can call upon your deity whenever you want like they're your best friend. And for your capstone you get the epic 
Epic Boon of Fate, which lets you add or subtract a d10 to any d20 test that a creature within 60 feet of you makes, and it refreshes on each initiative roll or short rest. This is a great boon because you can use it at every single combat, so you could use it on an attack roll that might not hit. The best way to use this is on a key saving throw that will end the fight immediately, something like a hypnotic spell or something. They moved a bunch of the features surround in their levels so that multi-classing cleric isn't as strong anymore, because a 1 level dip in peace cleric in 5e was extremely strong on any character. Cleric is still as great as ever. I was a little bummed out that only the cleric was released on this wave. I was expecting wizards and sorcerers to be here too. Oh well. I guess you just gotta wait another month until then. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I haven't really posted many videos since the DMT content kinda dries up at the end of the month. But I am working on lots of projects and I'm excited to share them with you when I finish them. Until then, take care. I'll see you all next month. Oh yeah, maybe I'll cover the races or whatever. Yeah, that's it. Peace out for real this time.